Hey guys, in this video, I'll show you how to set up your own Rust server. You can do things like test out new base designs, practice your rating skills, or simply just for messing around. You can pretty much do anything you want. It only takes a few minutes to get set up, so let's get started. The first thing we'll need to do is grab a copy of the Steam Console Client. A quick search brings us to the Valve Developer Community where the download is actually located at. Once you find the link, download the archive and extract it to any folder of your choice. The console client will be generating a lot of different files, so I would recommend putting it by itself. Go ahead and run the client you just extracted and it will begin to automatically update itself. After it's finished, go to the input dialog at the bottom and type login anonymous. To start downloading our server, type app underscore update 258550. If you want access to the latest updates and to test out new items before they're released, you'll need to download the development server with the suffix beta development. The download will take a bit of time depending on your connection speed. But once it's finished, you can navigate to Steam Apps, Common, Rust Dedicated to see where all the files for the dedicated server are at. You can run the server every single time through the command console, but to make it easier, we'll make a batch file. Create a new text file and change the extension to be .bat. Then just right click it and go to edit. Here you have all the options to modify the server name, description, world seed, and even world size. There's quite a few variables you can include in the batch file, like server.radiation can turn radiation on or off, server.salt adjusts the toxicity of your players, and even server.stability can turn on, on or off the uh, building stability. Now just go ahead and save it and run it. It'll probably take a couple minutes to start up as it checks for new updates and generates a new world. But once it's finished, go ahead and open up your Rust game client. The server won't appear on the master server list until you open ports on your router, which we'll cover in a few minutes. But just to make sure it works on your own computer, push F1 to bring up the console and type client.connect. 127.0.0.1:28015 If everything worked correctly, you should now be connected to your own Rust server. Congratulations. The last step is to add yourself as an owner so you have complete control over all the commands. Go to your server console and you should see the connection history of when you just connected. Beside your name is your Steam 64-bit ID. Highlight it and right-click it to copy it. To paste it, right click again. Type owner ID, paste your Steam 64 bit ID, then put your name as well as a reason for being an admin. Next, type write CFG to save all the configuration files and restart your server with a simple restart command. After the server restarts, Go ahead and reconnect and open up the console. Type one word, no clip. If it worked correctly, you should now be able to fly freely around the map. But that's not the only thing you're able to do. You could spawn in as many items as you want. You can design new bases and test rating them. Or best of all, you're now able to add a server mod called Oxide, which is what we're going to go over now. Another quick search will bring us to the Oxide Mod homepage. Go to the downloads link at the top and you'll see all the games that are supported. Open Oxide 2 for Rust. Installing this mod is a lot easier than setting up the server itself. All you have to do is extract the archive into your dedicated server folder, like so. Run the batch file you created and right away you should see that Oxide is loaded. Now that we've loaded Oxide, we can start adding plugins to really take advantage of the server. Go to the Oxide main page and you'll see a link for Rust plugins. 
There are hundreds of plugins you can add that all do entirely different things. Here's a simple plugin that allows you to change the in-game time. Most of the developers of these plugins put instructions of how to use the plugin or what commands are available on the page. Once you find plugins that you want to add, you need to put them in a specific folder for them to work. Go to your main Rust dedicated folder, Server, My Server, Oxide, and Plugin. Just drag and drop the plugin file into this folder, and in the server console, you should see that the plugin was loaded. Now just go back into your Rust client and you can test out the plugin. There's a lot of things you can add. You can automatically build in higher grade materials, you can copy and paste your base designs for further testing, and one of the best creative plugins you can add is the build plugin. This allows you to spawn items, animals, and even objects directly from the game prefab list. It should be noted that each time Rust is updated, you will also need to update Oxide and possibly the plugins. In order for other players to connect, we need to open ports in the router's setting page. This part of the tutorial is going to be a bit generic due to the vast amount of different routers. If you know the make and model, you should be able to find a port forwarding guide for that exact router. Open the Windows Network and Sharing Center. Click on the adapter that is currently being used, then go to Details. Take note of the default gateway and the local IP address. Type the default gateway into your browser. Most routers have a page at this address that allow you to modify settings after logging in. Your router settings page will probably look different, but the menu options will be similar. Look for the port forward settings page. Sometimes this feature is hidden away in an advanced settings area. Some routers will allow you to open individual ports. Others will allow you to open a range of ports. This one allows us to open a range. So we'll open 28014 through 28016, effectively opening 28015. If you make any changes to the router settings, you should restart the router and reset the network adapter. Finally, obtain your public IP address and have others run a client.connect command followed with port 28015. If everything works successfully, other players are able to connect, Oxide is now added, and most importantly, you have your own Rust server. Thanks for watching. Feel free to subscribe for future tutorials and videos.